When I was little, I wanted to be a lawyer, and I think that was just because of like movies I watched. Magician, because I thought magic was so cool. And then I was like, oh, they don't really lead the coolest life. You know who does? Astronauts. Architect. For a long time when I was younger, I wanted to design stuff. I thought that was super cool. A doctor or a lab researcher. Both my parents were doctors, so that definitely impacted my decision. A writer, specifically like a fantasy book writer, because I really liked to read those kind of books at the time race car driver because my grandpa was a race car driver. A ninja. Yeah, I thought like martial arts was super cool and like I wanted to just be a ninja. Fashion designer really badly. Like I would draw all these drawings of like little models in different dresses. I really wanted to like make clothes myself. Marine biologist because my favorite animal was an orca. Bus driver, like truck driver because there's this game, it was a bus simulator, and like I had like the steering wheel, and so that was just really fun to drive around. An ornithologist. I had this weird obsession with birds. I would spend my free time as an elementary school student going outside and looking for birds and recording them in a notebook. I feel like I wanted to be everything at once. I didn't really know what I wanted to be, and I don't think I really ever put that much thought into it. I think it was kind of just like, I knew that I wanted to help people. <laughs> what reminds me of my childhood is my grandparents' house. It stayed the same, smells the same as it always did. Every time I go there, I just am brought back. Disneyland, a lot of nostalgia there. Spaghetti, my mom used to make that a lot when I was a kid. Going to camp every summer and spending time outside with my friends without a phone, because that's what I've done every year growing up. Angelina Ballerina books because I would love those books so much. And 2010's Pop, because that's all that would play on the radio. But the trampoline park, <laughs> I was like, I was a gymnast and like a cheerleader, so I was obsessed with going to a trampoline park and I'd jump for like two and a half hours. Whenever I'd have recess, I would go out and I'd swing upside down on the swings or I'd climb all across the monkey bars, put my knees up and just hang upside down. It was just like the adrenaline of like having the blood rush to my head and, you know, falling on my face half the time. Rain reminds me of my childhood. Whenever I, I smell rain or I think of rain, I always just think of sitting in my room in England and always just watching the rain fall down. I grew up being this really inquisitive, curious kid, just like any other kid asking why for just about everything. And I would bug my grandparents, especially my great grandma, um, to tell me stories. My great-grandfather is really, really, really good at telling stories. He told stories of the ocean. He had these really, like, full, built-up storylines and pipelines. Since I was, like, four years old, I've had the same best friend. I met him here, um, but we met. It's pretty funny just because we had the same name. I love playing with my neighbor. We just run and go to, go to the local park nearby. Anything to do with snow and eating snow was, like, <laughs> it's really fun. I think riding bikes was, like, the biggest part of my childhood. I was the most terrified kid of everything. Growing up with a lot of fear and not really wanting to go and have like a lot more experiences, being outside, meeting more people, having more friends, just like spending so much time with myself. That's something that I really look back on and I'm like, wow, that shaped so much of what I think I feel today as a senior. Maybe around like maybe five or six, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. Me not really understanding what was happening, but knowing that something wrong was going on, I think it kind of made me realize that sometimes things aren't okay, especially even with like parents who always have the answer to everything. My siblings are very, a lot older than I am. So I've sort of been surrounded by adults generally a while. So I've been like sort of encouraged to grow up very fast. I do miss the like the idea of just being uh, like a 10 year old and just being able to go outside and play without like anxieties or worries about what's going on. I was 14 and my best friend died. I think that moment just completely changed the way I saw the world, the way I interact with other people. In my childhood, there was so much freedom and joy with the idea of creativity and making music. And I think that after he died, that really pivotal moment kind of closed me off to the idea of being creative. Um, in fact, I, I, I didn't write songs for years. I lost my dad in freshman year and it didn't click until maybe junior year that my reaction to it was, I knew it wasn't healthy, but I dove into more isolation. I definitely wish I could have spent more time just connecting with people. Having been homeschooled for so long, I'll always have that shy 
kid in me a little bit and being in public school. There's two different versions of me and I'll always have those to kind of contrast. I've never really stuck to a certain group. I was always drifting in between. I always really struggled being in one place for an extended period of time. Being skinny was the hardest hurdle to get over because I never saw anyone that looked like me. And so finding that confidence to be myself and... Being able to accept myself for who I am without having to conform to society's norms of beauty. I wish I could tell my younger self that she's beautiful. I feel like from very early on, first grade, second grade, I was super body conscious of like what I looked like when I definitely didn't need to be. I think I would tell my younger self that like I'm gonna feel completely differently about everything around me. I think that sense of change would have really like comforted me as a child. To try more things while I'm young, I feel like I could have started so many things that I would have really enjoyed and had more time to do them. really want that younger self to understand, like that deep knowing that the it is better to just sit in a moment and enjoy it. Don't think about creating something from your memories while you're making them. Oh, I would just tell myself to live more and have more fun as opposed to work so hard. I wish I just like listened more, I think. I talk a lot, learn to kind of just like hear what other people are saying. In high school, I, I wish, wish I, I talked like to, talk more people. to people. Definitely socialize with people I didn't think I'd get along with. Because I think I've noticed in senior year specifically that the people I never talked to in the earlier years of high school are actually really cool people. There's just certain things about like my personality I never expected to like blossom into a more like social person. I never expected to cry so much. So many tears. I cry all the time. I cry because I'm happy, I cry because I'm upset, I cry when I miss people and I miss people a lot more now than I used to. And I wish I did a lot more introspective thinking instead of just complaining and not acting. This is kind of weird, but I never, <laughs> I never expected to date anyone, actually. <laughs> Identity is interesting because it, it changes throughout your life. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm still, I'm still learning who I am. That's part of the, the coming of age is like you, you learn who you are, which was kind of scary. But then... It, it was also beautiful because it opened up this opportunity for me to be whoever I wanted to be. Identity is like ever changing and it's like it constantly fluctuates to like who I am during that day. Like what am I feeling? What am I experiencing? How am I processing it? I grew up in Catholic school and like kind of just like stopped believing in like God and Catholicism and stuff all together. And but like everybody around me still did and like all my teachers did, my family, like everyone. I was just in Catholic school and like every day I'm just getting like taught like, oh, like God, 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 like all these rules and everything. I'm also a lesbian, so like didn't really vibe with like everything I was being taught. So I kind of like when I was 13, I literally just decided I was like, OK, I'm done with this. And I like left. And with that, like I had to like kind of leave behind a lot of like parts of my community and everything. So trying to figure out what my identity is just apart from like exterior things. I don't know that one individual can make an impact by themselves. A huge part of who I am today is made up of all of the people that I've met. Initially, it was always that, you know, like, I want to change the world and I, I want to make as much of a difference as I can. But I realized that, like, what I want to do is make a difference in my small corner of the world. One person can remember me as, like, having changed their lives, then that's enough for me. Being forgotten is a really big fear of mine, I think. So like being able to make an impact on my, my children or like my grandchildren, having them remember me um, in some way or form. I know so many people who are kind of freaking out because they don't know what they want to do with the rest of their life, which is completely normal. But when you're in that situation, you think it's only you that doesn't have things figured out. When in reality, no one knows what they're doing. You know, people just kind of pretend like they know what they're doing. I guess be more empathetic to people. But I wasn't too great of a person, I would say. Just because I feel like I was a little mean. I feel like I was like a little sharp. I wish I wasn't like that. But I think a lot of growth to I am, where I am now came from that type of person that I was. And I, re I regret some of the things that I, I had done or said in those years. But I, I am grateful for who they've made me now. Something I think I'll leave behind is sort of caring too much about what other people think of me. I'll leave behind 
<laughs> so corny. I think I'll leave behind my tears. The thing that I would leave behind would be regret. I don't think it's worth it to get hung up on the things that I wish I had done or the wish I would do differently just because you can't. Something I'm gonna take with me is my perseverance. I'll probably leave behind taking things too seriously. Leaving behind running. I've been running for a long time. I kind of always wanted to be somewhere else, be someone else. I'm unsatisfied with myself as I was when I was trying to get away from who I am now. I think that I'm done with that part of my life. But I'm leaving behind sort of the person I regret that I was. I'm leaving behind a lot of also people that I never got a chance to like fully just connect with and be closer with. Like I'm leaving behind my childhood, but I still hope to like keep that childhood joy or like young, like happiness, I guess. I still want that to be within me. I hope in the future I keep getting to know people and learning their stories. I hope in the future I am happy with what I've done. I hope in the future my success will depend on my happiness. I hope in the future the world is kinder. I hope in the future to be creative, happy, and just doing what I truly love. I hope in the future that I am more carefree than I am now. I hope in the future that I will appreciate and seek joy more. I hope I don't see my future self as a betrayal of my current values. I hope in the future I continue to chase my dreams and live how I want to live my life. I hope in the future that I will feel free. Dope shit like that, Jerem. Oh, hi. Welcome back to kids. Um, follow your dreams.